what up? So I'm going to continue working on this project today. On Thursday, the Spark Fun package came in. Got the LCD and got the Magician chassis, which after I saw the chassis, I'm now really excited. I'm definitely going to try to uh, put together a chassis and put together encoders for it. So this is what I have. And uh, this is the LCD that I'm going to be using. This is two lines. This was only one line. And this is backlit. So uh, first thing we need to do is make sure that this code will work with this LCD. So I'm going to have to go inside our uh, mail headers onto here so I can use it on the breadboard. And I think I'm just going to to conserve mail headers. On this one I just use a strip of mail headers. I'm just going to go and uh, solder on what the pins I need. And oh yeah, and here's the barrel jack that I ordered from Sparkbun that came for the project. It doesn't fit onto a solder breadboard. The holes are too big. It's meant for this type of breadboard. So I'm going to end up having to figure out how I'm going to drill the breadboard out to use the power jack. Okay, so I soldered it on. I ended up soldering in a straight header. And don't mind my solder joints. I'm not a good solder. I'll never tell you I am. <laughs> but uh, just added power for the backlight, which you need the backlight in order to see. And it works. So that's cool. Now, pretty much, I want to get this on a all soldered up. Here's the diagram I drew. The only thing I didn't fill in was the power for the LED because I figured, well, I could run the power off of uh, one of the pins of the 644. But I'm still going back and forth whether I should do that. But, uh, First, we had to see how much milliamps that LED draws. So, uh, let's look at the back of it. Okay, so right here is the LED. And the trace goes to all three of these uh, resistors. So, I guess they choose which resistor they want. So, uh, the current limiting resistor is this 331 right here. And I don't know these surface mounted resistor codes, so I had to search it. Okay, so I looked it up online, and that 331 is a 330 ohm resistor. I also measured it with my multimeter, and um, it came out to 327 ohms. So, uh, under worst case, I don't know what the voltage drop across this diode is. So under worst case scenario the resistor would have a voltage drop of 5. We know it doesn't because the diode consumes the voltage but let's assume under worst cases the resistor is going to have a voltage drop of 5. So 5 divided by 330 equals 15 milliamps. So that's well under the um, 40 milliamp of the microcontroller so I won't be burning out any pins. I'm still hesitant on whether I should do that or not because the microcontroller is always going to have a, uh, I mean, we can cut out the backlight. So like if for some reason in the future I want to use that board for data logging of some sensor or whatever, I can uh, cut out power, the backlight power, which will save 15 milliamps. So it'll save, you know, a little bit of power on the battery. But the... LCD module is always going to have uh, always going to have power. So I'm going back and forth whether I should wire it up or not. I guess I uh, I guess I will. I have plenty of pins. But then I was also thinking maybe I should supply the LCD module with uh, the microcontroller. Nah. Okay, oh, yeah, I'll just go and hook up this to uh, the backlight power to the microcontroller. Okay, so I got the LCD mounted to the board. I decided I wanted to put mail headers here so I can pull out the LCD and use it for a different project, you know, so it doesn't have to be tied down to this board. And since it stuck out so much, luckily when I was building the line following robot at Radio Shack, I bought these standoffs that I never used. So I used two to uh, keep it level and it 
turned out pretty good. Uh, these holes right here on the LCD were too small for these screws, so I had to drill them out, drill them out, and now it's mounted pretty solid. So uh, now I'm, I don't feel in the mood to go and start soldering everything together today, but I'll definitely go and try to lay all the parts out so far. And I had to decide whether I'm going to put mail headers off of the microcontroller so that in the future I can just stick, you know, I stick the, be able to stick wires in the mail headers to get to the microcontroller. But we'll see. Okay, so I have it laid out pretty nice. Um, yeah, so uh, this is all the main components. The only thing that's missing are the 0.1 UF uh, decoupling capacitors for the chips and the uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor for the reset pin. But I think this is a nice layout. I really don't feel like soldering today, so I'm going to hold off. But once I get ready to solder, I can start going at it. And this way, I don't have to mess with, I hate messing with these prototype boards, man. Nice clean board. Now for this, I got the breadboard one, and the whole, I had end up having to drill out the holes for it to fit, but I can still solder to that. Just had to make the holes a little bigger. But yeah. Okay, I lied. Decided to, uh, start soldering a little bit. All I soldered was, and I know these, these are how I do my schematic drawings, and I know that they're, they're not the way you're supposed to do them, but you know, they work for me. I only did the power supply up here. So, which is all this stuff right here. So, got that all done. And like I said, I'm not the best solder in the world, but here's my ground bus down here. So I can attach my ground points. Here's my unregulated bus right here. And then this U right here is the 5 volts. So I can just attach my wires there. Um, my uh, line following robot, which oh, I have the paper over it. I did all the wire traces above the board. To try to make this one look neater, I'm going to go and try to do all my wire traces on the back side of the board. So that when I'm done, the front side of the board looks just like this. But uh, I am going to pack it up now because I tore my whole apartment apart just doing the finding the little parts that I need it. So uh, probably tomorrow if I'm not doing anything I'll continue on soldering. Okay so I'm going to start on this project again and I figured what I'm going to do is uh, to start I'm going to uh, wire up these headers for the programmer. So I can program the chip on board. You see this is the adapter I made for the breadboard. I just put the programmer on here and can put it on the breadboard. But in my case it's going to go straight to the microcontroller. Uh, from the last video I had this microcontroller centered to the board. I moved it over because I realized I should isolate it some from the power supply since this will probably be noisy. And uh, this is going to be my first test of trying to solder putting all the wires on this uh, on this back side. I'm going to put all the wires on the back side so it looks nice and neat on the front side. And uh, you see even on this one I put the wires on the front side. So uh, this will be my first test. I'm going to do the reset pin. Reset is pin 9 and according to my diagram sheet. I'm going to have a 10k resistor uh, pulling it high under normal circumstances and then in between the resistor and the microcontroller it's going to go out to the ISP so that can pull it low. So uh, let's see how this works. Well, reset pin is done and uh, this is going to be a long and strenuous process. Okay, got the programmer on there. Uh, I checked the voltage, everything works fine. Looks really crappy but you know it's going to work. Uh, when I first soldered it up I accidentally put the 5 volts down where the ground was so that's why it's always good to double check your work but I put the ohm meter across everything nothing is connecting even though the solders look bad <laughs> and uh, 
that part is done so pretty much all I had to do now is wire up the LCD board and I realized I was really uh, slamming the shit out of that LCD board when I was moving the board there on the stove but I want to leave it in place so the headers stay solid there so uh, that's what I did so far okay so I just finished soldering it up like I said I'm not a professional solder <laughs> so don't wanna but it'll all work and I'm glad I bought that wick because I needed to use it a handful of times so uh, last thing you always do is uh, check to make sure you don't have any shorts which I, I I, pre I periodically check what I've soldered as I go, but I'll I'll check the mains or the you know uh, where it all comes in. Trying to get this on camera. Okay, it is 598 ohms. So. Uh, Uh, that should be good. I'll uh, double check to see what that that is at six volts to make sure uh, it's not drawing a whole bunch. Okay, so I calculated it out to about 12 milliamps, which is good. So I put the chip in. This chip is the one I was using on the breadboard, bread type board, and uh, should still have the same program in it. So let's see what happens. nothing don't even have a black light so let me start doing some diagnosing okay so I checked all my voltages were good but look I forgot to ground the black light uh, backlight so one more solder to go so I guess I kinda rushed that there you know I didn't check over all my traces I just checked as I go and made that mistake but uh, didn't fry anything so back light is grounded now let's see what happens yeah well, that's good oh yeah by the way the back light is being fed from the microcontroller straight straight uh, let's see oh there we go so the screens working now Okay, now I'll go and try to program it through this ISP port and see if I can get something else to be set on there. Okay, so I plugged in the USB Tiny and it's powering the board. Uh, let me go and uh, program it and see if it successfully uh, programs right. Yep. It programmed right. Now I'm just gonna have to uh, put in the code to break it up so all your base fits on one line. Let me break it up real quick. Okay, I modified the code. Let's see if it works again. All your base are belong to us. And this uh, SparkFun LCD, the red, it looks awesome, man, in real life. And uh, so much better than having this. <laughs> you know, a solid thing. And now I, if I want to test out sensors, I can just solder the sensors to the microcontroller and I have a, a screen up there so I hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions or have any suggestions on how I could have done things differently next time uh, feel free to uh, leave it in the comments below